Hey gang, in the last lesson we talked about what it means to be a ratio, and in this video we're going to talk about what is a rate. A rate is a ratio that compares two quantities with different units. Okay, so a rate is a uh, type of ratio, but it's specific because it compares quantities that have different units. So one very common example of a rate is miles per hour. Okay, so if I said a car was traveling at 35 miles per hour, I'm comparing the number 35 with the number 1, 35 miles per 1 hour, but those two quantities quantities have different units. So that's what I mean by a rate. So here in this first example we're going to learn how we can calculate a rate. So it says in example one, Mr. Yance typed a 15 character text message in five seconds. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to try to answer uh, questions A and B on your own and then once you've answered those go ahead and click play to check your answer. Okay, so this is a very simple rate problem. Most of you could probably answer this um, problem without knowing a whole lot about rates. Uh, so if I can type 15 characters in 5 seconds, then in 10 seconds, because 10 is 2 times 5, it would make sense that I can type twice as many characters, so 15 times 2, or 30 characters in 10 seconds. But part B is asking how you can find the number of characters that I typed in one second. Okay, so if we multiply to get the number of characters in a larger amount of time, going from 5 to 10 seconds, then to get the number of characters in a smaller amount of time, so from 5 seconds to 1 second, we would use division. So I'm not actually going to find the number of characters I typed in one second, but understand that the process to do that in this case would be to use division, and that takes us to uh, unit rates. So what is a unit rate? A unit rate is a rate that has a denominator of one unit. A unit rate is a rate that has a denominator of one unit. So again, going back to the example miles per hour, if you're measuring the uh, amount of miles you travel in one hour, then that would be a unit rate. So it's the second unit, as long as that um, has a quantity of one, that would be what's called a unit rate. So here in these next couple of examples, we're going to use a visual diagram known as a tape diagram to try to find the unit rates given this information. So in number two, it says Ainsley read ran eight miles in two hours, write her speed as a unit rate. So to get a visual of this, um, comparing these two rates right here, I'm gonna go ahead and draw what's called a tape diagram. And a tape diagram just looks like this. Sort of two very long rectangles. Okay, my top rectangle is gonna be my first quantity, which is miles, and this uh, bottom rectangle is going to be my second quantity, which is hours. And I know that this top rectangle, okay, the total amount of miles she ran was eight miles, and this bottom rectangle, the total amount of hours she ran, uh, hours she did that in was two. So this top and this bottom rectangle are equivalent to each other in terms of she ran eight total miles in two hours. But again eight and two are different quantities themselves, so we're gonna visualize this by dividing this rectangle into parts. So I'm gonna start with my bottom rectangles here. She ran two hours, so I'm gonna, for two hours, so I'm gonna split this bottom rectangle representing hours into two parts. So I'm gonna divide it in half, okay? So this would be one hour, and then this would be two hours. I'm going to do the same thing for my top rectangle, which represents miles, but remember she ran eight miles in two hours. So I'm going to split it into eight pieces. So there's two pieces. Here's four. And now here's eight. 
So each box up here represents one mile, and then each box in this bottom rectangle represents eight hours. So now if I want to try to write this as a unit rate, I'm just going to count in one hour, which is represented by this much of my tape diagram, okay, in one hour, how many miles did she run? Well, she ran one, two, three, and four. So the unit rate for this problem would be four miles for every one hour. Okay, for example three, we're gonna do the same thing, draw a tape diagram. Uh, it says a package of five crackers contains 200 calories and how many calories are in one cracker? So I'll draw my diagram first. And it wants to know how many calories per cracker. So cracker is the bottom box, the number of crackers. And calories is my top box. And we know that a package of five crackers, so uh, my bottom rectangle I'm going to split into five different units. There's one, two, three, four, and five. A package of five crackers contains 200 calories. Okay, so now I would not recommend splitting your top uh, rectangle into 200 pieces because that's going to take you forever. What you can do is you can split it into um, a larger number of pieces, but just keep in mind every piece is going to represent more than one calorie. So we could split this top row into 10 boxes. And if we split it into 10 boxes, then that means every box represents 20 calories. So I've already got my bottom row split into fifths, so we can split this into top row also into fifths, and now we can split it into tenths. So now every top box just represents 20 calories. So if a bottom box represents one cracker, then how many calories are in one cracker? That would be 20 plus 20, or 40. So my unit rate is 40 calories per every one cracker. Okay, now at this point some of you are probably rolling your eyes and wondering why you have to draw tape diagrams for these problems. Well, you don't have to draw a tape diagram for every single problem, but again, it is a good way to visualize what we really mean by a unit rate, okay, what we really mean uh, by that. Uh, the more common way that we find unit rates is by this process. To find unit rates, we divide both the numerator and denominator by the denominator. So now let's try this simpler process for examples four and five. Example four, it says Rachel picked 48 apples in six minutes. We want to write this as a unit rate. Well, let's start out by writing that as just a regular rate. My rate is 48 apples per every six minutes. Okay. Make sure you include your labels when you're writing a rate or a unit rate, so apples and minutes. Well, to get this to be a unit rate, I want my denominator to be one, and so that means my denominator, which is currently a six, I need to divide it by six in order to keep my ratio equivalent, okay, or keep my fraction the same, I also have to do the same thing to the top part of my fraction, so I'm also going to divide it by six. So getting unit rates is kind of like reducing uh, your fractions here. So we're gonna divide both the top and the bottom number by six because six is the denominator. And now that gives me a one minute on the bottom. Six divided by six is one. On the top, 48 divided by six would be eight. So my unit rate for this problem is eight apples per every one minute. Number five, it says Anne downloaded 35 songs in five minutes. How many songs did she download per minute? So again, my rate for this problem is 35 songs per every five minutes. To find my unit rate, I need to divide the top and the bottom by the denominator, which is 5. So that gives me 1 minute on the bottom, and then on the top, 35 divided by 5 is 7. So that means Anne 
downloads seven songs per every one minute. Okay, moving on to the last page here, example six. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to complete this table below with these different um, scenarios. First of all, we're going to write each scenario as a ratio, then as a rate, and then finally as a unit rate. So my first scenario, it says Sam can do 120 jumping jacks in two minutes. So my ratio for this problem is just 120 to 2. My rate is just my ratio using labels. So Sam is doing 120 jumping jacks. every two minutes. And now finally my unit rate is taking the top and the bottom number here and dividing by two. So that gives me one minute on the bottom and 60 jumping jacks on the top. So that means Sam is doing 60 jumping jacks per minute. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and try the next two rows on your own. Once you get done with those, click play to check your answer. Okay, let's look and see what you got. Uh, for the middle row, it says a babysitter gets paid $60 for every four hours of work, so my ratio is 60 to 4. My rate is just that with labels, $60 per every four hours. To find the unit rate, I need to divide the top and the bottom by the denominator 4, and that gives me $15 per every one hour. The bottom row, you have to be careful with this one for um, the last part. So Abby can read 15 pages of a book in 20 minutes. So the ratio is 15 to 20. As a rate, that's 15 pages per every 20 minutes. To get the unit rate, remember we have to divide the top and the bottom by the denominator. Okay, so a lot of people would be tempted just to reduce 15 over 20 to 3 fourths, which it does reduce to 3 fourths, but again my unit rate, the denominator has to be a 1. If I divide 15 by 20, I do get the fraction 3 fourths. So she's reading 3 fourths of a page per every one minute. Okay, my last example, example 7, is going to ask us to uh, compare two different rates. And so it says an adult's heart beats about 2,100 times every 30 minutes. A baby's heart beats about 2,600 times every 20 minutes. How many more beats does a baby's heart rate beat in 90 minutes than an adult's heart? So if we're trying to compare two different rates, uh, the best thing to do starting off is to get both of those rates in a unit rate. So let's start with the adult. So an adult, we know an adult's heart beats 2,100 times per every 30 minutes. To make that a unit rate, again, I need to divide the top and the bottom by my denominator, so a 30. So that means an adult's heart, for every one minute, it beats 70 times. Okay, for a baby's heart. A baby's heart beats about 2,600 times every 20 minutes. So to make that a unit rate, I need to divide the top and the bottom by the denominator, which is 20. So a baby's heart, for every one minute, it beats 130 times. Okay, so now the question's asking how many more beats per minute does a baby's heart beat in 90 minutes than an adult's heart? Okay, so now I'm going to take each of these unit rates that I have and now I'm going to get them in terms of 90 minutes. So if an adult's heart beats 70 times every one minute, then to find how many times it beats in 90 minutes, I can just take the bottom times 90 and do the same thing to the top part of my fraction. 
So 70 times 90, I do need you to work that out if this was on the homework, uh, but for sake of time, 70 times 90 is 6,300. So an adult's heart beats 6,300 times in 90 minutes. A baby's heart, again, beats 130 times every one minute. So to find how many times it beats in 90 minutes, again, we're going to take the top and the bottom times 90. And in 90 minutes, a baby's heart beats 11,700 times. Okay, so this is how many times an adult's heart beats and a baby's heart beats every 90 minutes. And so now the question again is asking how many more beats does a baby's heart beat in 90 minutes than an adult's heart? So I need to subtract 11,700 minus 6,300. When I do that, I get 5,400. So that means a baby's heart beats 5,400 more times. All right, I know this was a longer video than um, some of our others, so be sure you review this and understand um, all of the things that we talked about in this video. If not, write down those questions so you can ask those the next time I see you in class. And until then, have a nice day. You're all wonderful people. Take care.